Now that we've created the river strings, the sore strings, and the tin, we're ready to create a run the heck grass interface. Moving up to design, coming down to rivers, heck grass, create the heck grass project. Now the strings that we need, the models we need to define, first of all the river strings, the obstructions model we're not going to use just yet, the source string models, of course those source strings that we've created, the tick box says yes we do want to give them names. Now the names for the strings will be defined by their intersection with the center line and the chain edge at the intersection point. A factor of one would be used to name them by meters. If I wanted them measured in kilometers, I could put in a factor of a thousand. Now I'm not expecting two strings to be closer than a meter apart, so I don't need any decimal places in my names. This next option down here for create source strings, if I was to turn that on, 12D would automatically create source strings for me perpendicular to my center line and extending out 50 meters on either side. Now that would be perfect for an engineered waterway or a roadway, but for a natural stream such as this, we have to go through the work like we did to define our source string locations. If we left this tick box turned on and processed it, it would delete all of the work that we've just done and create new sections for us. So we don't want to do that. The cross sections that cut get cut from the tin, they will be stored in a model called cross sections for our review and the tin that we're going to use to cut them from is going to be our survey buildings. Now the levy tolerance is used for heck grass and what that does is automatically mark levees for us. Now a levy for heck grass is anywhere where the water does not flow in the outside reaches until it gets over top of a high point or a levee. So, if you'd like 12D to mark these for you, what 12D does is start at the beginning, go towards the outside, and looks for a significant drop in elevation before it marks the levee. Now, a significant drop is defined by this tolerance. A tolerance of zero means don't mark any levees. Let's put this in as a 0.3 meter of a drop. So, if we ever do get 0.3 of a meter drop, it'll mark a levee for us. The delta, delta Y tolerance, HECRAS allows us to have 500 points per cross section. If you're using LIDAR or laser imagery data, you can easily get hundreds or sometimes even thousands of points across a cross section. Using this filter will remove extra points. So putting a filter in of as much as little as 0.1 of a meter will filter out essentially a tube passing along this line. So if the extra points were inside that 0.1 meter diameter tube, then they would be deleted. Think of it as a tube filter. Now to start up the heck grass project, you can specify left bank, center, and right bank end values, but these of course you're more than welcome to change inside heck grass. A startup discharge, we'll put in 10 cumex for this creek, but once again, you can change that inside heck grass. Heck grass does need to know the units, so we'll mark it as metric. And finally, we'll define the project name. Now, the project name is going to be used for all the different files, so it's only the stem that we need. I'm going to once again call this Geelong. And then, oops, get the spelling right, Geelong. And then select process. You can see it very quickly goes through and creates the the project for us and we'll come now come back and take a look at the source strings pardon me the cross sections that have been created and take a look at what's happened to our source strings and river strings now that we've run the heck grass interface let's take a look at what we've created before we look into heck grass so we'll finish this screen off now let's go back and let's profile one of our source strings the first thing you'll notice about the source string is that it now all of the source strings are orientated in looking in the downstream direction. So regardless of how you drew it, you're now looking in the downstream, with this being your left bank and this being your right bank. Now what we've profiled here, because it's the source string without elevations, we're actually looking at the tin. If we came onto our section view and added on our cross section model, 
you would see exactly what was exported to HECRAS. Now if you recall we put in a 0.1 tolerance for our filter. So what we've exported to HECRAS was not exactly the same as the tin. And that's why you see here a little bit of a deviation between our tin and what was exported to HECRAS. If you didn't want that deviation ever, you would simply use a delta Y tolerance, delta Z tolerance of zero inside the panel. So the other thing you'll notice is the names. We talked about the names of the strings being equal to their chainages along the center line. That's where the 603 comes from. But you also notice that you get a one dash in front. This indicates that it comes from the first center line that we've drawn. Now if we had more center line strings, if we had another tributary coming off the side here, those sections would all be called two dash. And that way they get kept together. One other thing that happens now is that all the source strings have been reorganized from a downstream to an upstream direction. So if I was to go profile our most downstream section, I could now use my next and previous. So if I go to the next spot line, you'll see that if I zoom out a bit, that I'm now at my next upstream source string. And if I go next again, I'm slowly moving myself in the upstream direction. Now I didn't use these before, otherwise I would have stepped through my source strings in the order that I created them. After running the HECRAS interface, it's resorted them so that they're in a from downstream to upstream direction. 